Rod, low carb down under, thank you um, once again for inviting uh, both of us to speak, um, Belinda speaking tomorrow. And I can't really explain to you how proud I am of the fact that we are, as a husband and wife, able to speak in forums and uh, for her work to be recognised uh, along with mine. Uh, it's been an interesting journey for us both. Look, um, our health system has turned into a sickness industry. Um, and how did we, as healthcare professionals, actually allow this to happen? Uh, we know that the benefits of a low-carb, healthy fat lifestyle are an improvement in health and a reduction in medication for many. So why and who is blocking that message? And those industries that have much to lose have actually been influencing our medical education for a long time. And that education has been failing both the patient and the doctor. And it's actually not about the science, and, and it's never been about the science. So let's expose the red pill story. So I want to present the case of the big food and the pharmaceutical industry's complicit <coughs> activity on our international health disaster. Big food educates us on what to eat, and pharma controls our education on what to prescribe and how to treat. And those activities extend back over 100 years. Gary this morning looked at history, and we're going to take that back even another layer. And Peter talked about those industries, those associations, and I'll be talking about how they're actually complicit and conflicted. So the question is whether or not they were well-intentioned or have they hijacked the entire show. So this talk is about understanding the origin of our education and you alone can then decide what you're actually going to do with that information. So guidelines actually create the illusion of knowledge. And we as doctors have succumbed to following guidelines written by those with vested interests. We have a fear of stepping outside the guidelines, and it's really interesting that David Unwin's observed that amongst us as health professionals here in Australia. We have a fear of challenging. Surprisingly, much of what we've actually been taught in medicine is actually not science-based. So I'll make the argument that medicine, as we've been taught, is more about art than science. Art is open to interpretation. It is non-science. And our guidelines are based more on opinion rather than fact. And non-science is actually nonsense. So much of what we've been taught is a house of cards ready to collapse. Most education, and particularly medical education, works on the principle of read, repeat, and be rewarded. And most health professionals are very good at that. To read and then question is a path less travelled and comes with a different reward. And that's been my journey for many years. So are you ready to question your education and your teachers, and at what price? I have been a victim of disinformation for decades. Have we all been led astray? But now I know why. So the greatest health issue on the planet today is non-communicable disease. We are getting fatter and sicker. The complications of obesity affect every organ of the body. Childhood obesity is out of control. And there are escalating rates of obesity, diabetes, dementia, cancer, and almost every non-communicable disease. And it's within a lifetime, it's not genetic. This is our work future. And as a result of our health, we have an economic disaster bearing down upon us, and it's only going to get worse. And we're dragging down the environment with us. Topsoil is now the greatest agricultural export on the planet. And our farming practices are to blame, and that's related to our dietary guidelines. And we're actually exporting our health into the oceans. So what's to blame for our health crisis? Is it the food we are not supposed to be eating? Or is it the food we've been told to eat? Have we been completely conned? So is medicine a science or an art? Is it the right or the left side of the brain winning out? And I argue that biochemistry is science. It's as pure as it gets for normal cells. And the Krebs cycle, which I often come back to, is how a, cell, uh, how a normal cell converts essential proteins, essential fats, and non-essential carbohydrates into acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA is the fuel of our mitochondria, just like wood is to a fire. The acetyl-CoA is converted into ATP, the energy of life itself in every form. That's science. So we're familiar with the bell curve and how things 
vary as we move away from the midline. And nearly one third of people fall outside of two standard deviation groups. This becomes a massive confounding variable considering that guidelines are drawn up for two standard deviations. So a third of the population fall outside of what guidelines are actually supposed to be applied to. So how we live as individuals is the exact opposite of a laboratory controlled experiment. Evidence by association is just art. Biochemistry is science and how we is it then applied to the population is art. Can you believe the opinion of a healthcare professional that cannot actually work out the answer for themselves? Or have their opinions based on funding dollars? For decades, medical education has been eminence-based rather than evidence-based. It is increasingly hard to question guidelines and authorities, and as a result, guidelines are suffering under the weight of that inertia that we're all part of. Science has become biased. The scientific method is steeped in tradition, but every step is now conflicted by bias. Preconceptions, funding, experimental design, observer bias, right through to publisher bias, are the norm. And I'll actually argue that the null hypothesis may now be null and void. There's been a corruption of the scientific process, and most claimed research findings are fault with the majority of research not able to be reproduced. Our reliance on the scientific method is at best on shaky ground. Bias has turned science into an art. It's one of my favourite quotes. Voltaire was trying to tell us that medicine is an art in the 18th century. The art of medicine consists in amusing the patient whilst nature cures the disease.